from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Roshan Lloyd D'Souza. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from two donors. The first is our family from Swartz Creek, Michigan, for their son's physical and mental feeling, for the return of family who have fallen away from the church, and for the living and deceased members of the George, Al, and Staklovitz families. The second is an anonymous donor from Canim Lake, British Columbia, in loving memory of Tracy May Archie and for her son, Connor. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, today the Church honors the first martyrs of the Holy Roman Church. Today, as we honor and remember these martyrs, we pray that we too may deepen our faith in Christ and work for the greater glory of the Church. To enter into this banquet in a worthy manner, let us accept all our sins and seek God's mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who consecrated the abandoned first fruits of the Roman Church by the blood of the martyrs, grant, we pray, that with firm courage we may together draw strength from so great a struggle and ever rejoice at the triumph of faithful love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah, earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman, and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now therefore hear the word of the Lord. You say, Do not prophesy against Israel, and do not preach against the house of Isaac. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Your wife shall become a prostitute in the city, and your sons and your daughters shall fall by the sword, and your land shall be parceled out by line. You yourself shall die in an unclean land, and Israel shall surely go into exile away from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God was in Christ to reconcile the world to Himself. The good news of reconciliation He has entrusted to us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the sea and came to his own town. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralyzed man, Stand up, Take your bed and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. My brothers and sisters, the church's liturgical calendar is a continual public remembering of saints, feasts, and theology by mankind's most ancient source and carrier of institutional memory, the Catholic Church. 
Today's feast day commemorating the first martyrs of the Church of Rome did not exist prior to the liturgical reforms of the Second Vatican Council. Instead, the sanctoral calendar was crowded with various feast days to particular martyrs from this early Roman persecution. This feast commemorates those unknown and unnamed men and women who were cruelly tortured and executed in the city of Rome in 64 AD before the martyrdom of Saints Peter and Paul. Authority has had a bad press in much of the world for over 100 years and still seems to have in some parts of the world today. The authorities are people who seem to be able to run things the way they want and are answerable to no one. What authority really means in all these cases is that some people have the power to do what they want and when they want, and it usually means that these people have an army to back them up. Authority means power, which means force, which means violence. No wonder we are sometimes suspicious of the very word authority itself. Yet, in the Gospels, we read that Jesus has authority. Authority in his teaching, authority over diseases at a distance, authority over the storm, authority over demons. In today's gospel, we see that Jesus has authority to do what only God can do, to put away sins, to change a person's life from the inside out, to free them from whatever is gripping them so tightly that they cannot even move. What is this authority? It is like the authorities we know in our world. Supposing there was a different kind of authority. Supposing there was a different kind of power. A power that did not work by having an army to back it up or thugs to break down your door and early hours of the morning. A force that had nothing to do with violence but everything to do with the strange compelling power of freedom and love. We might say, let us have some of that. Well, that's what is on offer in the Gospels. That is why Jesus' actions were so astonishingly effective, so much so that the people with a little bit of power of their own were so angry and upset. That is why the Gospels in one story after another tells us that this is the sort of authority Jesus has, and that is why we need to try to understand it. At the heart of today's gospel is Jesus' claim to forgive sins, to put them away, as the Jews have often said. The word forgive here literally means send away, sending all one's sins off into the far beyond where they are forgotten forever. That is, it seems, is what was needed in this case. In most of Jesus' healings, this was not the issue, but it was certainly here. A glance at the paralyzed man on his stretcher told Jesus all he needed to know. The paralysis was a sort where what we would call psychological forces had reduced the body to a state of immovability. The man had done something, perhaps many things, of which he was deeply ashamed. He was in over his head, as we say, and saw no way out. He not only felt guilty, he was guilty and he knew it. Gradually, this great sense of guilt stopped him doing things. Then it stopped him moving his body altogether. And finally, 
his friends took their faith and their friend in their own hands and brought him to Jesus. The faith that they are talking about is faith in Jesus Christ and in Jesus' authority. Faith that Jesus will be able to do something about their friend. That is what Jesus is responding to. He addresses the key problem, knowing that all the symptoms will quickly disappear if the main disease is dealt with. Jesus has no straightforward physical means of healing the man. He uses the authority which God has invested in him, authority to forgive sins and so to bring new life. He is already acting as the son of man, the one who is to be enthroned over all the forces of evil. He has the right, even in the present, to declare that sin is a beaten foe and to send it away. All that requires of us is to believe in the Son of God, to deepen our faith that he too may give us that authority to live in his presence. Amen. Let us put forward all our prayers before our loving God. We pray for the church for greater unity among Christians. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Prayer. We pray for the sick and suffering homebound, those in hospitals, for their greater healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For our faith in the Lord, faith in one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all of those in the daily TV Mass community that have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, we pray for the elderly who represent the roots and memory of our people. May their experience and wisdom help young people to look towards the future with hope and responsibility. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyrs poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord and Savior. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, 
we acclaim You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called as to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold, Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. With the body and of Christ, bring us to the last and the last. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the love of Christ. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.